Welcome to Upticks. I'm Jake Falcon, the founder of Falcon Wealth Advisors and your host of Upticks. Today is episode 171, Retirement Cycles. for joining me back on another episode of Upticks. I hope all of you out there are staying safe and healthy during this horrible pandemic. For today's topic, I wanted to discuss the three different retirement cycles. And you may be asking yourself, what in the heck is he talking about? And hopefully you are, and hopefully that's a reason that you clicked on today's episode. But what we found is that when clients go into retirement, they ultimately experience three different phases. And they're classified as the go-go years, the slow-go years, and the no-go years. And I wanted to talk about those cycles today because as financial advisors or wealth advisors for our clients, it's very important to us that we have conversations with clients as they're entering or approaching each one of these cycles so that we can help guide them in their financial decisions. So we'll start with number one, which is the go-go years. This is typically immediately after retirement, all right? So that big weight has been lifted off of your shoulders. Uh, if you're married, maybe your spouse is retired at the same time or soon after. And we call it the go-go years because this is probably when you're going to have the most energy and have that bucket list or to-do items or travel destinations that you've never gotten to do. This is the time to do it. Right? So if you want to eat healthier, if you want to join a gym, if you want to travel, if you want to buy a second or third home, uh, if you want to buy a new primary residence, I've had clients do all of those things um, and or look at all of those things, and it's been awesome. And so the idea is in those go-go years, you have energy, you're in your 50s and your 60s, um, you're healthy. This is the time to really, truly find your new purpose and experience and enjoy life to its max, right? This is why we all work for 30 or 40 years, 20, 30, 40 years. And it's to have this opportunity of this go-go years. Now, for many people, it creates a level of anxiety, which is completely normal. Uh, and the reason is, is because if you have worked for 20 or 30 or 40 years, and now all of a sudden you have, you know, your complete calendar is open and you can fill it with literally whatever you want to do, to some people that's daunting. Um, and, and to some people it's scary. And so uh, lean on your friends at Falcon Wealth Advisors. I, literally, we've helped hundreds of people retire so we can throw out some ideas, some book recommendations. I even know a retirement coach that if you're really struggling with your purpose, I can refer you uh, to them and they can help you uh, kind of reinvigorate yourself and re, you know, repurpose what your new goal in life is going to be. Now, in these go-go years, as it pertains to financial planning, we typically also spend a little bit more money which for us and our clients is normally fine. The most important thing though, is that you wanna have that built into the financial plan. You don't wanna go and meet with Corey or myself and say, okay, you know, $6,000 a month is gonna be plenty for me and my spouse to live off of. Um, and uh, you know, typically we'll stress the plan and we'll tell you how much you can afford. But if that number really needs to be 12,000 a month or 15,000 a month, uh, we wanna make sure we've budgeted that in and factored for that before you retire. Right, but in these go-go years, you also may have to pay for health insurance on your own. Uh, again, you might have some home improvement projects. You might want to do some remodeling. Something may, may be coming up that you want to do, and that's what, um, that's what we want to plan for in those go-go years. Now, as you enter into your 70s and 80s, we call that your slow-go years, right? So you've, you've done all the cruises. You've traveled all over the world. You spoiled your grandkids, you have bought a second home or maybe even a third home. Um, you know, you've done the home improvement projects. Uh, now you're on Medicare. Uh, your energy level is starting to drop just as we get older. And you don't have the desire to go out and do the things that you did in your 50s and 60s, which is okay. Some of my clients in their 70s and their 80s, I would argue, are the happiest they've ever been because life is very simple for them. Uh, hopefully they still have their health, right? And they're just enjoying their life, enjoying their grandkids or their kids. Uh, and their family, and whatever arts and crafts or hobbies that they have, they're doing that uh, as much as they want to, but they don't feel obliged to. 
Uh, and their lives are very simple and they're slowing down a little bit and they're just enjoying every day, right? And so they're happy, they're maintaining their health, uh, but they're not go, 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 right? They're not going and, and, and doing all this expansion and doing all these different things. Uh, they're just kind of on cruise control and, and relaxing and enjoying things. And what we've seen with our clients in, in their 70s and their 80s is that their spending actually drops. Now, what's good for us at Falcon Wealth Advisors is we actually factor in your spending increasing every year for the basic reason of inflation. What we found, and now inflation is starting to heat up again, and, and that's certainly fine, and that's one of the reasons that we have that built into the plans, but what we find is that clients, as they reach their 70s and 80s, they actually don't spend more money. They typically spend less money. But as a buffer or as a, uh, an effort of being conservative, we want to assume that you're going to spend more just in case you need to. Maybe your medical bills are higher. Maybe you do still have energy in your 70s and 80s, and your go-go years are lasting a little bit longer than somebody else's. Right? So we never want to typically count on that unless you know for sure or have a specific plan, which I'm going to get to here in a moment. Um, but again, those slow-go years, we start to coast a little bit. We're not spending as much money. We're enjoying some of the simpler things in life. Um, and it's really kind of just coasting, coasting a little bit by versus go, 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 travel, you know, do all those things. And then as we get into our 80s, 90s, and beyond, we simply call that the no-go years. And these are our clients that are basically staying at home. People come to see them more than them go to see them. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. People come to see them more than they go out in, in, in the world and visiting other people. And so, um, you know, again, health is typically number one on their priority. They're still trying to keep uh, their minds challenged, uh, whether that's you know crossword puzzles um, or just being on social media or having phone conversations with family, right? They're, they're really focused on their health, typically not so much on their finances. Their financial plan is probably in good shape at this point. And again, they've kind of gone down even from cruise control where they're not really doing much at all. Um, and, they're, and they're just enjoying life. And again, like I said, enjoying uh, every day to the, to the max in there. I have a client who is doing this strategy, this go-go, slow-go, no-go uh, strategy almost perfectly. And, and I want to talk about a real client story. And it's a new uh, topic here that I've been bringing up on my show of upticks here. But before I go into the real client story, quick commercial plug, if we're not already connected on social media, uh, thank you so much for all of my friends that we have connected, but I'm on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. So if we're not already connected, please feel free to send me a friend request. I love expanding my network. And then my company, Falcon Wealth Advisors, is on the same four platforms. Also, I've been very humbled. I feel like our subscriber count on our YouTube channel picks up almost every single week. Uh, so thank you for everyone that has subscribed. Also, if you're listening to this on your favorite podcast platform, be sure to subscribe. That's the best way uh, to not miss another episode of Upticks. Quick plug for my business partner, Corey Bittner. He has his own show called In the Money Insight that you can see right here on our YouTube channel or on your favorite podcast player. Okay, so about a real client story. So I have a client, a married couple, uh, who both retired from their companies. They both had long, successful careers. And when they came to me, uh, they initially said, Jake, we want to do some stuff that we've been holding off because both of us have been very busy in our careers and working. So they did it. They did some extravagant cruises. They actually bought another home that I think might have been might have been bigger or at least newer than their previous home. They spoiled their grandkids. Um, they dished out money right and left, right? And their financial plan actually started to tilt a little bit where it was looking like they were going to slowly deplete their account. And we talked about it. We talked about it in every one of our reviews and we were all okay with it because we knew that they were turbocharging their retirement and they were spending money on the front end. And now what they've done, and this is credit to them. This isn't really... I mean, again, I did the projections and I managed the money and I gave them advice along the way. But most importantly, they have maintained discipline and they have started to decrease their spending now that they're entering into their slow go years. So they're cutting things that they were splurging on before and now their spending is starting to decrease. And so their plan from running out of money is now tilting back the other way where it's going to sustain and, and continue to be fine. And so credit to them for having the discipline um, again, that's part of our role at Falcon Wealth Advisors, though, is to be your guide and help you with financial literacy and explain exactly what your financial plan means to you. So this was about them. This wasn't about me telling them, hey, you need to pinch every penny or no, you can't go to Europe. No, it wasn't about that. It was about me saying, yes, you can go to Europe. 
this is what it does to the plan. Just so you know, Mr. and Mrs. Client, you know, five, 10 years from now, we're going to have to start cutting the spending if you want to do this. I was completely fine with it. They were completely fine with it. Most important thing that they have is discipline and then me being their guide along the way. And I'm really happy for them because again, they got to enjoy life and their go-go years pretty darn to its fullest effect. I mean, they did a lot of things uh, and I think they, they shared a lot of memories with their family and that's really for them, that's what money is about. Now, every one of us has our own definition of why money is important to us, but for them, it was creating experiences, doing some things that they had been putting off because they've both been busy in their careers. And it's awesome. And I'm, I'm so happy for them that they got to do those things. And now again, that they're slowing down a little bit, they're cutting things back. And again, the plan's working back in their favor and it's all worked out perfectly, right? So those are the, some of, that's just a taste of some of the things that we can do for you at Falcon Wealth Advisors. So it's a very important uh, that we meet with our clients. We update their financial plans. Corey and I, as the lead advisors, are meeting with every single client or, or managing every single client relationship. And then we have three financial planners who are really happy to go into the weeds with you and fully examine your financial plan and run these different projections to make sure your financial goals are aligned with your purpose. So good, quick takeaway. Remember, go-go years. Actually, we at Falcon Wealth Advisors encourage our clients to spend money in those early retirement years. Go enjoy life. This is why you worked hard, but you don't want to do it without discipline. As you enter those slow go years, many clients actually start to cut back. And if that's something that you want to do, we can model that out in your financial plan. And then the no go years, instead of you going out to see people, people are coming in to see you, which actually isn't so bad uh, for them either. Okay, so that is all the time that I do have for you today. Um, quick pictures will show up here. Rachel and I spent a little over a week in beautiful Cabo, San Lucas, Mexico. Uh, for all of you that tuned in last week, you can see I, I did a, my, my show of upticks uh, from the balcony of my hotel with the Pacific Ocean in the background, which is pretty cool. Um, I had a great time. Uh, one of her best friends from high school actually uh, had her second wedding down there. Uh, and it wasn't from being divorced. Her and her husband actually got married during COVID uh, where they live in Austin, but they did a very small ceremony, I think, in their backyard. So this was actually their real wedding uh, where they could have friends and family down in Cabo San Lucas. I had an awesome time. I met some really great people. Um, perfect weather. I got to play golf three times. Uh, so credit to Rachel for uh, tagging along with me on one of those rounds. That's actually only the second time that she's ever gone golfing with me. She doesn't play, uh, but she did ride in the cart um, and, and served as a caddy and a, a pseudo uh, photographer during, during my round. So we had a lot of fun doing that, spent some time on the beach, rented a cabana. Quick side note, we did an all-inclusive um, package, which for some people, I'm sure that's great. For us, it really didn't work well. I felt like I was obliged to eat um, a lot and I didn't really wanna do that. And so uh, I don't think uh, an all-inclusive package is for us. And so um, that's the first time I think I've ever done that. So maybe in my younger years, I would have probably liked to indulge on, on that opportunity, but now, uh, it's not for me. Maybe if we had kids, I could see maybe if you had two or three kids with you and they wanted to eat all the time, that, that could be beneficial. But uh, for just me and Rachel, we're pretty simple. Uh, in fact, I think some of the staff looked at us funny. We were in a cabana and I think I just drank water uh, all day. And, and the guy was like, you're on vacation, sir. And I was like, I know, I just want water. <laughs> and I think I had some fish tacos and uh, I don't think Rachel had much either, but you know, we weren't going to just down there to overindulge. We were down there really to relax. Um, but like I said, we'll flash up some pictures on here. We had a really good time. It was nice uh, to get away with my wife. I feel like we haven't gone anywhere really major since COVID had broke out. But we felt pretty safe um, with the protocol. I, I'll, I'll give props to Mexico. I feel like they were taking it very seriously, maybe even more seriously than uh, we're doing in Kansas City. Uh, so the staff was very uh, well protected and masked up and, and we felt pretty good uh, as far as that's concerned. Uh, one quick side note on the timeshare pitch. Uh, and again, I don't think timeshares are bad but they were very aggressive with pitching these things um, to us, which I get it. That's, that's how these people get paid. Uh, but I thought it was interesting that uh, it felt like every day or every other day, they were trying to get us to take some tour to go see their timeshare. And, and um, I was a little off put by it. I didn't really expect that coming into it. Um, but you know, it's fine. Um, like I said, I, I played golf um, with some people that uh, had timeshares and they seemed to love them. And I, I have many clients that have timeshares. So again, I don't necessarily, necessarily think they're a bad thing, I just thought it was interesting that they were so aggressive into trying to pitch us uh, to get one. I guess that's how they make their money. But anyways, nonetheless, beautiful, beautiful part of the world. If you haven't been to Cabo, I do recommend it. Uh, it's a very cool town. 
Um, beautiful scenery. The golf course was amazing. I uh, almost felt like I was playing golf in a video game because I was hitting off of cliffs and, you know, the waves were crashing in and it, it was pretty cool. Um, pretty awesome experience. Uh, so that's all the time that I do have for you today. Thank you again uh, for tuning in. I hope all of you out there are staying safe and healthy and I hope you have a great week. Thank you.